Yep, I forgot to drain the, what you can call, oil. Doesn't look too bad at first glance, but something I can spot here. Can you see that little scratch here? So that's quite deep. So here the, the coating probably has worn off. Let's compare it to another one. I actually have a Mitaka cylinder here already laying around, which should also be for the 123 engine. Ports look fairly similar, except this port is not existing here on this one because it's one of the early model cylinder. It's actually a 220B. So from what I read, it's from the Aprilia Pegaso, so the touring enduro bike. And I'm not sure if they make the same power as the other ones. Then on the intake side, there's a big difference. This one, these ports here on the side are non-existing on this cylinder here. So yeah, let's see. I'm not really confident we can use this cylinder anymore, which is a bummer because that scratch, it's not just a scratch, it's actually the, the coating that has worn off. So I'm not sure if we can save that or if it needs to get replated because if it needs to get replated, I might as well just get another one and maybe I can use this one. So I'll get this one prepared. There are some minor scratches to it. But this can be honed without any issues, I think. So maybe we even have a better cylinder going on here with these ports here. Whew. But so far the piston looks fairly good. But then it's just the ring that got stuck and somehow caused an issue with the cylinder itself. So I will go to a machinist and ask him for more details to figure out if we need a new cylinder, if we can reuse this one or what we're going to do. Quest like that. Shout out to Mr. Power. Oh guys, I got news. I got news. There is good news, there is bad news. The good news is we can now decide if we're gonna get a big bore kit or an original cylinder. The bad news is the cylinder that was on the bike is toast because it's got this, this uh, scratch and the chip I just showed you before. And the other one I have, the Mitaka one, the machinist, he recommends to not use it because he actually thinks that the coating is really bad. And I trust him by his word on that because he has experience. So we can now figure out if we're gonna get a big bore cylinder or if we're gonna stay 125. However, I somehow feel that going over 125 would kind of be cheating somehow. I don't know how you feel about that, but if you wanna get to 200, of course we need to consider every mean necessary. But if we can stay at 125 cubic centimeter, I guess that would be the best case. Let me know in the comments if I should get a card cylinder, if I should get an original R Rotex 123 cylinder, a Rotex 122 cylinder or a big board kit. So yeah, let me know and we'll figure out the best solution for this engine. So have fun with the rest of the rebuild.
Oh boy, that was fun but exhausting. So we got every part of the engine now disassembled here and everything except the top end is in uh, okay shape. Uh, we need to measure some parts like the gearing and stuff but other than that at least from the looks it looked quite okay. I guess it was been rebuilt before because the bearings are all different and that's usually a sign that there was something done. We have the reed valve itself which looks fine from outside. Then we have the cylinder which is trashed. We have the cylinder head which is trashed as well as you can see from these marks but we plan to replace this one anyway so that's not a big deal. Then we have the exhaust that's completely rusty, the exhaust flange, so we're gonna sand blast, sand blast this one probably. Then that's the part I already replaced, but this one has a leakage somewhere, so I guess it is, yes, you can even see it, it's right around here. And I already hear you say, oh, that's just a scratch, it's just a scratch, no, it just started leaking always like right on top here, and I couldn't help. It. So maybe I can seal it somehow or I'll get a replacement. So yeah, let's let's see Then we have the cover for the oil pump. We do have the clutch cover, which is yeah <laughs> Fairly dirty and disgusting the clutch looks okay, but the plates are a bit thin uh, They're not measured yet, but I think I need to replace them then these gears look good, but I will replace um, at least these two, I guess, for now. And then we have the water pump. Of course, there's going to be a rebuild of that happening. The crank looks okay, feels okay, but I will rebuild or I will get a, a new one just to make sure because we are planning to put out a high horsepower number and I don't want to risk the crank bearing going bad. Then you have the left case half from the clutch side. Looks okay but everything is really really dirty. Then you have this little washer to make sure that the main bearing doesn't hit the case. We have the shift pause. Actually this distance here needs to be measured if they're still okay and then we also measure uh, the free play in here in the right position. If it has too much free play, then we need to replace the shift uh, shift fork. This is just the shaft that holds them in place. Then here we've got the balancer shaft, which also looks okay. No signs of wear or, or anything like that. Then here's the shift drum, which then basically uses these forks here and moves the gears up and down in the position. Then we have the output shaft here, the input shaft. We have the shift shaft with all its springs. That also looks fine. Then that's the right crank cover really really dirty but I guess it's recoverable I guess we can make something really nice out of it and then here we have the stator this is the flywheel itself a bit rusty so we need to clean that off then this is the stator pickup which uh, maybe you've seen me put a mark in here in the video that was actually just to align the, uh, this notch here because you can actually move this ignition and you need to set it up once you rebuild the engine that was just to help me a bit but I guess I need to do it from scratch anyway then we have the starter gear this one looks fine we have the starter motor that's also good and then we have the cover here so that's basically an engine we have the crank halves that hold everything together we have the crank shaft that rotates and gets pushed down by the explosion happening up here, bam, and then it just rotates here in the case, it rotates whoop, up and down, up and down, this one goes up and down, this one 
spins and then it just goes to the clutch and to these shafts and finally we go to the chain which then goes to the wheel. Really easy <laughs> how it works. And now since that's a two stroke there's a bit of an addition here. So usually with a four stroke you would have valves up here that would open and close and let air in and out of the cylinder depending on the cycle where the piston is at. But this one here is a two stroke and most of you might be familiar with it. But in here the piston moves up and down of course as well. But there are pre-made ports in here that usually or that depending on where the cycle or where the piston now is are going to let air in to the case or outside. So what's happening here is instead of the air going in on top of the chamber it's actually when the piston goes up there is suction created and this will lead to air flowing in here and the air will go down into the crankcase and once that's done and the cycle is completed the piston goes down 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 it dis, uh, dissipates, dissipates the air which is in here and then the air flows up into the with these uh, you can see them here with these overflows the air actually moves up into the cylinder comes through these ports then gets combusted by the pressure here and then once that's done the air goes out through the exhaust port with that there is the case that there is always an airflow going on and that's also why we have this specially formed uh, exhaust pipe because it's really clever engineering that always when there is a combustion happening here there's a sound wave traveling through the exhaust and that sound wave then gets reflected by the exhaust back and make sure that all the gas that now would just go through and flow through the cylinder actually gets pushed back so the combustible gas that just would have been wiped out of the cylinder will get pushed back and then the explosion will be much better that's what we call the power band that's what we call the resonance and that's just what makes two strokes really awesome it's science by itself but uh, yeah <laughs> I, I don't fully understand it, but I guess I understand it well enough at least to rebuild an engine, but I don't uh, understand it well enough to actually tune an engine because there are people that modify these ports here depending on when the ignition happens and so on. I don't know much about that. Uh, I've seen a few channels now that cover stuff like that. If you have any favorites, please let me know and let me also know what kind of cylinder we should get for this bike. So I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, there's not much left to say. I guess once that's done, we will cover the next part in a bit. Have a great one and thanks for watching. Peace out.